Hey, Posey Gloves here, and today we're going to be looking at da 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 vocoders and real time pitch correction using MIDI and also automatic pitch correction, detection, all that sort of a thing. So I have here a piece of audio, sounds like this. Oh, it has not been unmuted. It sounds like this. The source of element is the self. And that is what we're going to use as a carrier wave. Now, we're going to be going through. This is an introduction to vocoders as far as timbral or timbral changes are concerned. So it's spelled timbral, but it's pronounced timbral. So I have here a tau vocoder, a fruity vocoder, uh, the mouth, a, uh, a pitcher, it's got Maximus on it because I didn't. it's panned one way and I routed it here. So Maximus, all it's doing is merging it back to mono. If you see a Maximus somewhere. We have a vocal synth, again, another Maximus. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's important for you to just get the sonic ideas in your head on what they sound like. If you want the details of how to route it, how things are interacted with, and what a vocoder is and how it works, I'm going to put a link in the description to my tutorial on Fruity Vocoder. And that's where I explain all that stuff. I explain the routing. Sorry about that. I explain the routing. And I also have a vocodex going. And I'm using left to right encoding for most of these. Some of them don't require it. And also, if you are if you just don't know about carrier waves and modulating waves and all that sort of a thing, again, that tutorial is down below. So let's go ahead and take a, a little bit of a listen. And that's going to... So this is going to be our modulating wave. Our carrier wave is going to be this harmer. And it's playing a saw wave. <laughs> It sounds like that. In cases where it does not require a modulating wave because it is real-time pitch correction, we are instead going to be just using a MIDI out. And so I have a MIDI out, and it is playing this. So it's a, a variation on a D major chord, and that's what that is. The other one is going from like a, what is this? Some sort of a C add 2 to a D major. Or in this case, it's technically just a D power chord because there's no... But anyways, I mean, no third. But that's besides the point. Let's go ahead and just hop into it and begin to understand what some of these things can sound like. The reason I'm also doing this is because we have so many different plugins and they sound so different and they give you different options because none of them do it quite the same way. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at the Tal vocoder. This is a free vocoder. I cover it in my free VST series. You can go check that out. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description. If I forget, someone just tell me. Here we go. So the first is it's going to play a note. C4 is what the modulator carrier, the, uh, the carrier wave will be a C4. And the modulator will be, of course, that voice. So here we go. All right. So that's what the Tau vocoder sounds like. Just sort of on its default setting. I messed a little bit with the, the EQ. And of course, I cover it in that free video. Or in the video where I talk about it as a free thing. Let's go over to the next one and just begin to do some comparisons. So this is the Fruity Vocoder. Same deal. And let's go back to the Tal Vocoder. The Fruity Vocoder. And you might be going, these sound so different. And of course, you've watched those videos, and I'm assuming you know some of the basics of vocoding. So you say, well, what makes them sound so different? Especially if you watch the one on Vocodex, which we're going to get to in a little bit. That one, well, first of all, if we have these number of bands, right? So we can have like a 32 band, 128 bands. And the way they use the filters to detect this is also important because some would will like purport to have like all these bands, like 500 and something bands, like this incredible amount of bands, but their filters might not be so great. They may have been designed in a way that's not like very useful for a vocoder and not that, well, that's not technically true. It'll just sound really different, right? And so if you're going for intelligibility, you're going to want to design your filters in a way that's going to preserve the parts of the voice well. And you take into all these considerations. So vocoders will sound super different, especially because here we have some formants options. We have our bandwidth options. So we can manipulate our filters. And here, these this Tal vocoder uses different filters. It's a different plugin. They had to make them different. It also comes with a built-in uh, carrier, but we have enabled input mode, left is carrier, right is modulator. So right now, it is treating the left and right. And this has been coded left and right. You notice it's actually a pretty standard thing for vocoders, though that should have an option that most vocoders will. So that's the fruity vocoder. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. This next one is native instruments, the mouth. Now this one is freaking dense. So it's the same deal, 
Only I've selected the Big Brother preset number 12. I usually come into the mouth and dig through presets and then I'll manipulate them from there. I don't often start from the beginning and rock it from there. So this is just the preset number 12. It has a bunch of its own internal. So you see we've got like bass, effects, synth, input. So it's a little bit dense. One day I'll do a whole separate series on it. But I use it quite a bit because I love the diversity of the presets. It's just, they're just great starting points. If you click on the vocoder, you can actually select, uh, if using a very dynamic method, the type of vocoder signal you want. So you can select like what it's going to, so you have your modulator, which is what's coming in, and then the carrier signal that comes out. And that's what you're controlling here with this. And then you have some effects outs and you can choose between them. So it's, it's quite dense. We're going to leave it at that. But basically, you can do that. If we go through a couple other presets here and hit the space bar. And also, when you're doing a vocoding, this is a good point that we can bring up now. Let's go back to the Big Brother because I may come back to this. When you tune a vocal for vocoding, you're going to want it to be generally, I said when I was talking about tuning vocals for this, there's two thoughts about it. If you're going to use the mouth, I highly recommend removing all the pitch variation because, as you heard, it's going to move the notes around according to where you think. You may, even, you may even consider tuning it all to one note, and that's what you do in resynthesis vocal when you're, when you're singing for resynthesis. You're generally going to tune it all to one note because you're going to write in the pitches after the fact. Because remember, a vocoder is basically a, frequ a frequency quantizer is one way to think of it. So that's the mouth. Let's go ahead and move over here to pitcher. So the pitcher is a real-time pitch correction. It's not the same because it doesn't require a additional, it doesn't require a carrier wave. Yes, it doesn't require a carrier wave. So it detects the pitch, and you can see our input pitch and what it's going to do to our output pitch. Right now, it's going to play this this note that we have here. So. The source of element is the sound. So you see our output pitch is on C, but the input pitch is moving all the way around. So it sees the input pitch and then it's correcting it. And there's various settings. I actually have a video on pitcher and how it works. But the reason I bring this up in the vocoder section is because maybe sometimes you're going to want this. And if we move over to the chordal examples, check it out. The source of element is the sound. So that could be a really cool thing to do. Another thing is if you, again, if you take it into a new tone and tune it so you can get rid of some of those those things. This was, this was designed with sort of a live setting in mind. So you have like a keyboard and you're, you're talking and you can manipulate your voice in real time just like that. And in my tutorial where I cover it, I actually, I believe I begin the tutorial that way. I talk through it at the beginning. And again, when you're tuning, you're, you if you're going to use this in a track and you want to get rid of some of that modulation stuff that's happening as it like as it blurs between two pitches, you can simply remove some of the variation in your voice and perhaps center your pitches as well is always probably a good idea. And you can get something that's a lot more smooth out. And so that's... The source of element is the sound. If you've heard that song, What'd You Say? It's actually based on another song. That's the song that uses What'd You Say. I can't remember what it, the name of that song. But anyways... They use one of these like crazy. It sounds like a vocoder. I'm not sure if they used a vocoder or not, but this is basically just it's taking your voice, it's duplicating your voice and spreading it out onto the notes that we pick via MIDI. And something that I'm, I know I'm going to hear is how do I get this all hooked up? That's also covered in the Fruity Vocoder video if you went and clicked on that. But if you're still here, you go to picture and you select MIDI and the port number will become available. And I chose harmonize. That gives you the polyphonic option. But this is true in any sort of a third party thing. You're going to have to select a port, create a MIDI out plugin and select the same port and, and you're good to go. You're done. If it's a third party plugin like the mouth, for example, you're going to have to open it up and a third party plugin will have this cog option. You click on that and you have settings, input port. You don't care about the output because your plugin is not putting out anything. It needs to be able to receive note data. So what you do is you change that to port input port one and you're good to go. You're on input port one. Don't worry about the channels unless like contact will use the channels. But here we're simply concerned with the port, but we're not using. So if I wanted to control the mouth with this MIDI plug, I would just make sure I configure it to the correct port, but I don't want to, so I don't care. All right, now let's move on to the next option. So that's picture. That's also the difference. A vocoder will use a carrier wave and it's also got as far as frequency frequency quantizing is what I like to call it. But you get the idea. As, as, as when the pitches line up, it goes through and a 
pitch corrector, it doesn't have that sort of gate. It lets the whole thing through. It just changes the spectrum around. And so let's go ahead and look at the vocal synth. Now, every demo I've seen of this thing thus far, except for the actual product demo where they where they do the song, has been kind of terrible. Even when people are doing the tutorials, most of them start out with its automatic because it will automatically try and tune it for you. Go to the MIDI setting. You hit this right here. There's this little MIDI setting. You select it, and you have a as you see, you have a polyvox, which does sort of what Pitcher does. And I actually think it's a higher, I like it a little bit more, uh, but it does have a different character to it. So sometimes I like picture more. And then there's, vo the, they have a vocoder and you can select your carrier waves here. I've not like used this thing extensively. So I'm, I'm not totally knowledgeable about what everything does, but these things are all pretty straightforward. They're basically various ways of manipulating your voice. And if we play here, I'm just going to use the polyvox option for this because I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not a big fan of the vocoder. I just don't like it right now. But maybe later on when I read the manual a little bit more, I'll be a fan. I don't know. So there you go. That's what theirs sounds like. So if we compare theirs against Pitcher. Now the thing about Pitcher is it will, it kind of moves you between two octaves sort of. And based on the input that you give it, Whereas the vocal synth will actually play the notes. So if we move the notes down, that's all that's covered in the picture video. If you're like, what the heck does that mean? But if we move this down. See how different vocal synth sounds? Well, well. Sorry, they were playing at the same time. And now let's move it back up. And uh, what did I have it at right here? So that sounds substantially different, right? Let's try the same thing with pitcher. Now let's move it down. It's the same thing. It'll only matter if you move the if you move the notes around in the octave, because the input plays a bigger role in pitcher. But another thing about uh, these two things, why they're so similar in some regards, is it also has an auto tune pitch correction module as it comes in. So it's kind of interesting. They also have a speed and strength. And if you put pitcher on its auto tune mode, getting rid of MIDI essentially, so it's not receiving signal, you can set the speed at which this happens and you can do that as well in the other one. So vocal synth is sort of like a, a much beefier version of pitcher, but it also comes with vocoder and that compu, compu vox function, which seems like some sort of a vocoder, which is different modulating waves and maybe a different way of interpreting Maybe it has like a bit crusher built in or something. It seems like some sort of combination of things that's been made to dynamically interact with each other. But anyways, let's move on to the next option. I'm just showing you timbres. That's the original vocal. The last one that I wanted to show you is the vocodex itself. And if we turn that on, this is like the best vocoder I've ever used. I'm just telling you right now, as far as digital, I've never actually used an analog one. I think I'm going to though on Wednesday. I have someone coming over who's got a vocoder built into their synth. So that'll be fun to mess with. But let's go ahead and let me show you this one. Sorry, I have that. I have picture open. And here it is with the one note. Now this thing is a monster. It's totally a monster because you have all these options. I actually have like, I'm not sure how many parts, but I have a whole little mini series in the FL12 effects series where I cover this thing and how it works. And it's it's been vectorialized, so it's a little weird to see the knobs in this sort of way. And the order looks kind of funny now too, but it sticks out a little bit more than it did in the original. So yeah, you can like change band distribution. They give you extreme control over the filters. It's, this thing's insane. So I, I love using this thing. In my song Colors, this is the vocoder I'm using. It's, it's kind of also processing intensive though. So you want to be careful about this. I'm using the left-right encoding because that allows you to send multiple sources in and it's part of my template. So I can automatically have stuff go in just by simply routing it to the modulator. I'm like, oh, I want this to be a modulator. Write it to the modulator and it's already pre-configured so I can begin rolling. So I have this one loaded up by default on my in my template. But I have all these options in here. I didn't do anything. I simply turned it on and let it do its thing. But there is a huge number of options that I'm not going to go into right now. But you will see later on I in some tracks if I show you any tracks that I use that. But I'm showing you all these in this. First off, just to show you the palette and the various tools and how different they can be. Like the mouth sounds 
hugely different. There's actually a lot more vocoders out there, of course. There's all sort people make all sorts of cool and nifty voice manipulating tools. And the main thing you really need to understand is how does its tuning function work? Is it actually a vocoder? And if you can understand those, what are your controls over the filters on a vocoder? You know, are they going to be minimalistic and not let you control very much about the filters? Are they going to not let you give you your own carrier wave? Are you going to have to work with preset carrier waves? Is it a combination of effects? Like these things, if you understand the basis of what these tones give you, you'll be able to understand everything else. Because, for example, some of these things, like the fruity vocoder, will give you formants frequency shifting options, which is something that if your vocoder doesn't give you, well, we've learned in previous videos that you can just go ahead and do a formants shift on your vocal yourself, then you can get something like that. So if we play around with the fruity vocoder, maybe this is a reason why you'd grab this one right away. Oh, I'm, I'm like, what the heck? It's not working. It's because it's muted. Here we go. So that's really, really cool. And imagine if we were to mess with the vocal before that. And so things begin to get very, very dense when we toss this in. But we understand how a vocoder generally sends sounds. Most of those, like, vocoders that sound like this generally only have between 30 and 20 bands. So just because it's got like 128, that's more, so that's sort of, it'll sound a lot more like speech for sure. It's that most that I've also not talked about with vocoders is it's kind of important for them to be able to let some noise through in the voice. Cause that really helps with understanding what it's saying. So if you come in here to vocodex, you actually see we have a high pass filter here and we have a contour option with consonants and noise and all these different options that I talk about in the other one, in the other video. And you have a noise slider here. This allows you to put noise back into your signal so that when I say things that have these S's and these T's and things like that, you will be able to understand that because it kind of gets washed out in a vocoder in a way that makes it much harder to understand what you're saying. So those are some of the contours you have. Maybe you like things like pitcher. You see, I prefer to use, the pitcher's a great option, but new tone obviously is a lot better. I think I've heard Melodyne, but I've never, I've gotten to mess with Melodyne like once, but not really seriously sit down with it. But I heard Melodyne's like unrealistically clean. New tone definitely has artifacts, but they're artifacts that I kind of like. So I, I, I enjoy doing it, but I enjoy using it. But if I wanted to get like really serious about tuning vocals, I'd probably invest in a tool like Melodyne. If I wanted it to really maintain high fidelity, New Tone can maintain high fidelity as long as you don't touch it too much. I hear you can get away with a lot more in Melodyne. You can like stretch things all over weird spots and it would actually still sound really good. So, and in New Tone, you can do that. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying I've heard that there's quite a difference. I mean, one is like, you know, how, I'm not sure how much New Tone costs. It came with FL for me. And then Melodyne, if you want the full functional thing, it's like a thousand bucks or something ridiculous. Like it's up there. I know it's above 500. You can get a cheaper version, sure. But I mean, if you're going to get something that's really worth it versus new tone for the price, I'd go all out. But some people, they just want it because of the engine. Maybe you're, I don't know. I feel like you can make an argument for the other one. That's just my current sort of opinion. I'm sure as I research it some more, I It'll change because I've been looking at it for a while. It looks like a freaking good deal, but it seems like you'd have to go all the way in. Anyways, that was an aside. That's that. If you have any questions about this, let me know. And again, if you have any technical things about how stuff works, you have better have checked out those videos I mentioned before you come and harass me about it because I really tried to put them together in a way that's very straightforward so that you can grasp this. So we've got our palette down. Next up, we're going to look at some examples of these things in action being combined with a bunch of techniques. We've pretty much gone over most of what you can do with a voice. And the, the, from here on out, it's going to be mostly examples. So if, I'm excited to share that with you. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. I believe. Do you see the things I see? Do you believe? Oh,